Hi everyone, I'm George Fontan and I'm an architect in New York. Today I want to talk about sustainable house design. This is based on a blog post that I wrote uh, about 21 ideas for building a sustainable house. Some of these ideas are going to be a little easier to implement than others and some are a little more complicated and uh, not all will work for a renovation or an alteration of a house but they uh, certainly all will apply for uh, a new house construction. Uh, first thing for sustainability that you wanna think about is the location, all right? If you're in an urban area, you wanna be close to transportation, you wanna have the availability of infrastructure, and you wanna avoid sensitive sites. Now, after Superstorm Sandy in New York, we rebuilt a bunch of houses in the floodstone that were destroyed by Sandy. Okay, so in that case, these were people that had homes there already. They didn't want to leave the, the area there in Far Rockaway and Breezy Point. All right, so uh, avoiding sensitive sites won't always be possible, but if you can, you're probably going to want to stay away from there. Uh, and if you do build in a sensitive site, you want to build knowing you're in a sensitive site, okay, and, and build something to last. All right, like we built uh, steel and concrete houses uh, in, in the flood zone. All right, the size of a house. Uh, this is one that a lot of people aren't uh, always going to want to uh, deal with, but the reality is a smaller house is more efficient. I'm not telling you to build a small house. Uh, I'm not saying you should, but it just is a reality that if you have a smaller house, it uses less material, and of course, it'll use less heating and air conditioning. And heating and air conditioning is the greatest expense of energy in a home. All right, so smaller houses are always more efficient. The orientation of a house is really important, okay? So uh, I'm in New York, we're here in the north, we get a lot of sunlight coming from the south. So you wanna think about light and heat. If you're, if you're in the north and you want natural heat from the sun to have passive heating, you're gonna want a lot of glass facing the south. This is also gonna bring in light. On the north side, you can have windows and glass, but that'll be more ambient light, uh, won't do much for heating, but it'll help give a little bit of light. But from the south is where the, the light and heat will really be coming from. Uh, the layout of the house. Uh, a more compact square house is actually more efficient. This is why igloos are actually a hemisphere, okay? Because it keeps the heat within the shape, all right? So uh, a long, thin house might be less efficient than uh, a square house. Materials are gonna be a huge factor when building a house. So uh, locally sourced materials will always be more sustainable to avoid shipping, trucking, uh, you know, bringing materials from overseas. This is obviously not gonna work for everybody, uh, depending where you are will affect what materials you have available uh, for construction, okay? Also the availability of local labor may work with certain types of materials. Um, recycled materials. We always want to try to use recycled materials if possible. You have lots of different options. There are, there are uh, you know, uh, countertops with uh, recycled content. There are wall panels that have some kind of recycled content. There's lots of different materials you can look at, uh, but recycled materials is a great option. You want to avoid uh, VOCs, okay? Those are volatile organic compounds, whether it's in your paints, glues, uh, other types of uh, materials in the house low VOCs, all right? Insulation, this is really one of the most critical points in building a sustainable house, okay? You wanna not only insulate the house well, but you also wanna do air sealing, okay? Air sealing is the uh, how airtight the house is. Today, we build houses to be designed to be airtight uh, in the envelope of the, of the house, and houses should breathe mechanically. They should not be breathing through your walls. Uh, so if people say things like you should have a perforated house wrap, that is not a 21st century kind of uh, house design. That is an outdated uh, way to build. We're building airtight houses with a lot of insulation, okay, to keep the inside air warm and to prevent air from leaking through your walls, okay? So uh, I mentioned we built these houses in Far Rockaway. Um, when we did those houses, we did blower door tests. This is a test where they put a fan on a plastic sheet on a door, they blow air into the house and it tests the pressure of the house, how much air is leaking out of the house. So when we built these concrete houses with closed cell spray insulation, which is a uh, insulation that will expand when you spray it, it is uh, airtight, it's waterproof, okay? Um, the houses uh, ranked off the charts with the blower door test, so that's what you're gonna try to do. Okay, we, we way exceeded the uh, Energy Star requirements for, uh, for air sealing, and, th and that's your goal here, okay? Um, windows and doors. Your windows and doors should be rated for 
for high levels of air sealing. And of course, uh, insulation value. You can use triple pane windows. Uh, that's not, you know, it's going to be more expensive, but it's not necessarily uh, going to be absolutely necessary. You can uh, use uh, high quality double pane windows. Um, the material should be thermally broken to prevent heat, heat loss through the, the window um, itself. Okay. Energy Star, this is a no brainer and the easiest one you're going to do on the list. Buy Energy Star appliances. Any electronics that you're buying for the, for the house, uh, your heating and air conditioning systems, your appliances, uh, make sure they're all Energy Star. Uh, LED lighting today, LED lighting is pretty standard. All of my clients are putting LED lighting, so uh, using LED lighting is a great uh, option. Um, water conservation, there are water uh, fixtures that have low flow, toilets that have dual flush. This will reduce your water usage. And then HVAC, all right, that's your heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. This is the biggest energy usage in a house, okay? So you wanna use energy efficient systems. Today, mini split systems are really popular. These are electric units where you have a condenser outside and then a split unit inside every room. Some people don't like it because they have these wall mounted units, but you can actually get units that go in the ceiling, units that go uh, sit on the floor, units that go in the wall. There's a lot of different options. So you should be able to find something that works for you. The condensers outside are a little loud, but the ones on inside the house are actually really quiet. Okay. Um, but all condensers make noise. So uh, mini splits, one great advantage is that they're broken up into zones. So every room can have the heating and air conditioning controlled separately. So if nobody's home in one room, no need to run the air conditioning. Okay, also if one person likes it warm, one person likes it a little cooler, you can balance it out. And then that way you're not heating the entire house. Uh, one way you can break it up by, by each space. All right, and then therm smart thermostats. Everybody's putting smart thermostats now. Uh, they learn your patterns, okay? You start programming them. They see how, you're, how you live, all right? And then they will optimize your settings for maximum efficiency. This is a really great, simple option for uh, sustainability. Uh, you can you know, retrofit your home or, or use this when you're doing a, a new home. Uh, it's, it's one of the really easy ones you can do, all right? Uh, we put ERVs when we do a new house, okay? That stands for energy recovery ventilation. Now I mentioned that we build airtight houses. So the problem with an airtight house is that the air doesn't uh, leave the house. You don't get fresh air. So the ERV handles that for you. It'll have some exhaust that'll take the air out of the house, whether it's just from the kitchen or the bathrooms or from the entire house, okay? And then it'll bring in fresh air from the outside. Now an ERV itself is also very energy efficient because it takes the heat from the outgoing air and it preheats the incoming air. It also uh, will take the, uh, the, the cool air going out and pre-cool uh, pre the incoming air in the summer. So uh, the ERV is helping you when you have an airtight house, circulate your air, get fresh air, but it's also high efficiency in the, in the preheating and pre-cooling of the air coming in. You can have rainwater collection. Um, you know, this, this may depend on, on, your, on your climate if, if this makes sense, but you, that's, an, that's one option for sustainability. Uh, renewable energy, this will obviously be a big one. Okay, if you can put solar panels, wind power, or geothermal. Geothermal is not going to work everywhere. Solar is not going to work everywhere. Wind may not, but uh, you got to take your particular site into consideration and look at the costs. Some of these may have a, a high uh, upfront cost, but your long term costs will always pay off when you're doing renewable energies. Uh, another pretty easy one is instant hot water. Uh, we have water tanks, right? That water tank is sitting out all night long. Okay, if you have instant hot water, there's no tank, takes up less space, but the water just is heated on demand, so you don't have to heat an entire tank just to have a small amount of hot water. All right, planting. This is a big pet peeve of mine. Do not plant something at your house that does not belong in your climate. It will require uh, incredibly uh, high amounts of maintenance. Uh, it may require more water than you get in your climate, plant native species or species that are known to flourish in your environment without needing sprinklers. If you can uh, just leave the plant on its own and you get enough rain to sustain it, that's the best idea. You can have a vegetable garden. That's also a great simple way to be a little sustainable. All right. Um, the, the last two are, are things that I actually think are some of the most critical points of sustainability. Building to last. Okay. So, uh, you know, building a house that's not going to last a hundred years is far less sustainable than building a house that does. If I have to build a house twice, 
okay? Uh, that's not very sustainable, okay? So building a house that's gonna last uh, every aspect, the, the, not the exterior, the shell, the structure of the house, but also all the interiors, something that's gonna last that you're not gonna have to be renovating and fixing uh, you know, in, the, in the near future would be great. Build a house that you're gonna leave to your grandchildren. Okay, that's actually very sustainable as opposed to having to tear it down in uh, you know, 30, 40, 50 years and rebuilding, okay? And then um, finally, building something that you love is really the most sustainable thing that you can do because you're gonna take care of it and it's gonna last, okay? When you see some great old buildings, you know, uh, these, these buildings are taken care of. They're not just in good shape because, because they were built so great, but because they've been loved over time and people have taken care of them. And this will really be uh, a key issue. So you don't wanna design something that you're thinking, well, we'll just redo it in five years. That's not really a very sustainable way to live. Uh, building something that you're gonna love, you're gonna keep, uh, that's the, the best way to go, okay? That's 21 ideas for sustainable house design. Thank you for listening. Please leave comments below, subscribe. Thanks a lot.